Welcome to the GeekCast. My name is Steady, and this is another panel from the Superhero Car Show and Comic Con, this time with Linda Ballantyne and Katie Griffin, uh, the dynamic duo from the Sailor Moon series. Enjoy. Sailor Moon panel. <laughs> You'll make some noise for my next guest, Linda Ballantyne and Katie Griffin. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Is it on? It is on. Hi, guys! Hi, everyone's here. Hi, Linda. Hello. Sit down. Thank you. So exhausted from those stairs. We thought this was tomorrow. We have it on a schedule for tomorrow, but you guys showed up. Yay! Yeah, you guys got the bonus round. Tomorrow they're going to be going, hey, we're sitting in. Where is everybody? <laughs> What's happening? Well, hello. How has your weekend been so far? Wait, the weekend hasn't started. It's Friday. I'm so lost. But it's going well. This week is going well. Thanks. Thank you so much for being with us. This is... Oh, that's, that's you. That's you. This is a, a very special occasion. Did you know? I'm sure you did. Tomorrow is International Sailor Moon Day. Yeah! It's not Sailor Mars Day, first of all. Let's get that straight. <laughs> See, it's Sailor Moon is. Day. You can have like next Tuesday. How right, amazing is that? So we had this panel a day early. It should have been on International Sailor Moon Day. Yeah, what were they saying? I don't know. I don't know either. I'll have to get with scheduling on that. So happy early Thank you. Sailor Moon Day. I'm Thank honored you. to be able to speak with you both. Um, what does it mean to you to be back on the convention circuit, meeting with fans once again? What does it mean to you guys? It's amazing! I felt like, you know, two years went by and my, I don't even remember any of it. It's like sort of endgame. Everything just went off into the abyss, turned to dust. And now we're back! <laughs> and then the thing is, you come to these events and people actually give you love. And when you're at home, oh. they go, what's for dinner? Oh. And you go, hey, 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 come on, guys, come on. People give me love. Two years with no love is what I got. Two years. <laughs> we can bring some of these people home with you, and you'll just get love all the time. Happily, you're all invited. They will ask you <laughs> hey, what come. food you want. Oh. And what? clean. You haven't seen okay, my Okay, I feel like and I need clean. to get that. Where's my cell phone? I'm going to record that. <laughs> and clean. That's fantastic. You just said you do windows too? I feel oh like gosh. I really feel like my whole family should be listening to this I know. right now. I know. Uh, we're gonna have to exchange numbers and then if I can get in on that like just once out of the month. Alright. Yeah. I'm no, not. You're not Sailor Moon. I am not. You are correct. Uh, what has been the most rewarding aspect of working on the series for you both? This. Because truthfully, this was 30 years ago when we really had no idea what was happening. And in real life, we're besties. So now we're traveling together and meeting fans from that are, we've been doing this forever. So yeah, this is, this is our favorite part. It, it, it absolutely is. And the thing is, we became best friends because of this, literally. Literally. I mean, we knew each other when we were doing it, and we like, hey, how's it going, Mars Bar? And, you know, we'd see each other, and that would be about it. And then, you know, we'd see each other in auditions or other stuff that we were doing. But once we started doing Comic-Cons, we started traveling together. I know everything about this girl. She does. It's wrong <laughs> what happens with us when we travel. <laughs> we were sitting on a plane the other day, oh, yeah, yesterday, literally, yeah. and we both picked a movie. I picked this movie that was some slow movie that was a little tearjerker. She picks a rom-com. So I she's watching play. it, and she's giggling away, and I'm watching mine going. And then at one point, she's howling with laughter at this show, and I'm bawling my eyes out on this plane, and we both look at each other, and I'm like, and we're back. No. And then we couldn't stop laughing, and we were literally laughing so hard, we almost peed our pants, and I'm not even lying. I almost peed my pants on the plane, which would have been bad. 
That would have been bad because I was sitting beside you. But it didn't just laugh. Like it wasn't. I'm not talking like a like a 30 second laugh. We probably laughed yeah. for like and people were looking around, minutes. and I know everyone's like, "What are they watching? What are they watching? It's really funny." <laughs> no, we're just funny. Yeah. So that's what this show has given us. You two have been doing this so long. I, I just thought of this right now. You must have so much fun, not necessarily doing pranks on people, but just being yourselves and working off each other into very fun situations. Can you name a time where you've played a joke on a waiter or something, pretended to argue in your, your voices or something along those lines? Well, the funny thing is we're voice actors, so people don't usually recognize our faces, right? right? So Katie has this very, very subtle way of letting people know that she is Sailor Mars. No, I don't. Yes, you do. <laughs> she will put on her face mask with oh, yeah. Sailor Mars. It is, yeah, that's true, but that's, yeah. Well, or she's not. got on her phone, she's got Sailor Mars on her phone, and she'll put it down very casually on the table and push it across and they'll go, oh my God, Sailor Moon, I love that show so much. She's like, oh, well, actually, yeah. Well, what happens is we can gauge it now because we'll, we'll go out for dinner and I'm like, I can tell. That's Sailor Moon fan. We have Spidey sense now where we're like, yep, Sailor Moon fan right there. And then we'll just, okay, so it's not really a prank, but yes, I will put my phone down casually and then it works out. Usually it works out. It really does. Although I'll, often she'll say, do you like Sailor Moon? This is the voice of Sailor Moon. And she doesn't say that she's Sailor Mars. Then I'm like, they're like, oh no way. And I'm like, this is Mars. And they're like, oh my God, I love Mars so much. I'm like, hey, 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 back here, right back here. This way, Spidey this sense. way. Right here, right there. I found something very interesting. Can you please explain to the audience who might not know the very unique way you recorded for the show without ever being a being given a script in advance? We had no idea what was happening with Sailor Moon. We didn't know. We auditioned. We knew what they looked like. We watched a bit of um, the Japanese anime, and then, and then we were thrown into the booth and like karaoke. That's what it was, but like really bad karaoke. Because now you can, it's computerized. Back, back in the day, way back in long the ago, 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 back, back, in, day, back in our time, um, it was karaoke where they hand, they hand wrote everything, and it was English as a second language because they were French, <laughs> writing oh it out God. in English. And we were like, what's happening? And we didn't get the scripts. So sometimes you do episode four and episode seven. I actually thought I was gonna end up with Darian. I just thought, even though it's Sailor Moon, it was called Sailor Moon. I was like, but secretly it's Sailor Mars. <laughs> plot twist. Yeah, plot twist. So they would literally put us in this room and you would see the screen. So we got to watch the show as it was happening. And then above the screen, it would be what our words were and they would just scroll over. We literally got no script. We had no idea what was happening. And maybe the first scene that I was in would be, you know, like three minutes into the show. I wouldn't have any lines until then. And then maybe my first line is just like, oh no. And so it's like, you know, the words come across and they're just like, okay, let's, uh, they're not even showing us the whole show. They're just going, okay, let's fast forward to uh, Linda's first bit. Here it comes, okay, there we go. Okay, go ahead, and it's like, Oh no! And then it's supposed to be, oh, no! Like, you just didn't know. Somebody had stopped, we got to do it again, blah, blah, blah. But they just whipped through it so quickly, and we had no idea half the time what it was we were blur. saying. It was just a blur, a lot of screaming. It was a lot of screaming. Then, then, then when everyone's dying, that was sad. We're like, what, 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 what's happening? Everybody's dying around me. What is going on? It took us a little bit to then get Then we had to, uh, so when I finally realized what it all was, I had to wait, and then when we recorded all of them, I started watching it on TV. <laughs> and that's how I knew what I was doing. That sounds so challenging, and there must have been some very frustrating sessions trying to do that without any direction, and you're just watching things happen. I mean, sometimes. kind of. Yeah, it was it was challenging because it was all fast and furious and and we never recorded together so we would be recording solo a lot of episodes for a lot of hours and um, it was challenging 
but we were young and we were just so excited. And really, that was my first show and that, that was it. And then after that, I did a lot of shows. So it kind of got me started. So I don't look at it as torturous. I think, okay, that, that got me started. That was it. <laughs> Let's start there. So Sailor Moon was your first show. How did that come about? And Linda also, what got you into voice acting as well? Well, I um, do on-camera stuff as well. And at the time, I was dating Reno Romano, who was the first Tuxedo Mask <laughs> in real life. And he was already cast as Tuxedo Mask. And he's like, Kate, you have to, you have to do this. Like, you look like, cause a long time ago, a million years ago, I had long black hair and I kind of looked like Ray. So he's like, what, you train Kung Fu? This is ridiculous, you have to do this, it's voiceover. So I auditioned, I had no idea what was happening. And I never looked back, and that's how that happened. And how about you? Very different story. Uh, well, sort of. I mean, I auditioned for it, but I was technically the third sailor. Yeah. So it was, okay, the, this, this voice has been established already, okay. And I went in there and auditioned, but I was sick as a dog. I was so sick I could barely speak. I had such a bad cold flu thing that was going on, I was just like, uh, I'm gonna die. And I'm like, oh my god, I, I can't, what am I doing here? I shouldn't even be doing this. And I'm just sitting there like, I hate my life right now. And we were, I was had to audition for a bunch of different parts because a bunch of different people had left that couldn't be there and whatnot. So when I auditioned for Sailor Moon, Terry's voice was kind of nasal in a way. In a way, that's how she speaks. It was sort of more of like, oh, and so it was easy for me. It was so easy for me to sound exactly like her because my nose was stuffed up. And then I got the part. And it was like, oh, I got the part. Oops. And then it was, oh God, now I don't have a cold anymore. And now I gotta do it. And there was a time that I was actually considering shoving Kleenex up my nose. <laughs> and I just, you know, I had this, this thought of me sort of looking like a boxer, you know, with a nose this wide, full of Kleenex, so I could, so I could, uh, so I could sound like more like I've got a cold. And then I was like, no, I can't do this. I've just got to figure this out, man. <laughs> what made you, what made the role of Sailor Moon so appealing to you? Or were you just trying to get any role? Well, quite frankly, as an actor, you'll do anything. You'll do anything at all. But I loved, I loved the part of Sailor Moon. I loved her. She was this crazy, complex teenager. They're all complex. Teenagers are a handful. They are a handful. I know because I have three teenage daughters. Oh my God, shoot me now. How did I live through those years? I do not know. But anyways, I did. We all managed to somehow. Um, so I wanted her to be this sort of combination. Teenagers are two things. One, they want to be taken as adults. They think that they are so clever and they know absolutely everything in the world and they want to be respected and they know everything. On the other hand, they're still little idiots. They're little kids that just want to have fun. They want to be goofy and they don't want to have any responsibility whatsoever. So that's what I wanted this character to be. I wanted it to be like this combo platter of the two. Just sort of like the, I've got, you know, I'm in charge of saving the world. And yet, I kind of like that guy over there. And I will go head over heels, I will do anything, and now I just fell on my face. Oh my God, what am I doing? And that's what I wanted her to be. Fun and funny. So you made her your own, in a I way? I made her my own. Aww. She's my little girl that I put in my back pocket. <laughs> that's wonderful. I've been a uh, humble brag. I apologize. I've been a vocalist for uh, about 20 years now. And so I've had some experience with performing for hours on end and feeling the effects of how much your body exerts while just performing. Did you ever experience long, exhausting days? Because the way you are performing is not just speaking. There are screams, there are yells, there is projecting to levels I can't even imagine. Uh, how taxing is all of that? It's exhausting. It's, I think, again, because I was so young at the time, I was literally running on adrenaline for Sailor Mars, so I don't remember at the time being exhausted, but then years later, then you work on a lot of other shows, and you have to, <laughs> and you have to train your voice, so otherwise you, you leave there and you feel like you've just done a marathon, because, you know, and I, I feel like that's, that's what happened on, on 
well, all our shows. The thing is, when you're doing voice acting, you're not just using your voice. You have to use your entire body. Because if you, I always say, if somebody cut off my arms, I couldn't be a voice actor. Because my arms are always flailing around. Like when I talk right now, I'm talking like this and I'm explaining things and it's like, this is the way I say it. If I just went, this is the way I say it. It's just not the same. It's like, boom, here it is, it's right here. Can't you see it? Like it's, it's just, it's, and if it's you the way your you eyes, And she did that and she had a line where she was like, let's go guys. And, and you, if she just went, let's go guys, or let's go guys, you can actually hear it in her voice that she's, I don't know, maybe you can, but I can. Yeah, you totally can. And so oh, one of the things that's so hard is when you're getting beaten up or when you're throwing a punch, you're not just going, uh, uh, uh. you're going, uh, uh, uh. you're doing like shadow boxing. And when you're doing that for an hour or two, oh my God, I must have been ripped. I think I probably had a ripped body back then. Way back then. Yes. Yes. Oh, those years yes. ago, I'm sure I was ripped. Yes. We sure I was ripped. I was definitely ripped. Just like your superhero character, of course. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite episode or a favorite season? I'm sure it's like asking who's your favorite kid, but do you have one? I have a favorite kid. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't tell my daughters that. But I probably do. Oops, just depends who's on important? the day. <laughs> I know who it is. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. That's like really weird. Uh, okay, my favorite, it changes. It changes all the time because it goes back and forth a little bit. Um, I, I mean, I, of course I loved when she was drunk <laughs> on juice. I love that. I also loved when all of her friends were dying around her and everybody mm -hmm. was dying. And it was like, what is, and I was like, no, no, you know, like it's just, you're watching everybody die and you're like, oh, no, no. And you're doing this acting, and I'm watching it for the first time, going, oh, what is happening? No, no. And I'm sitting there watching, and then, uh, Linda, you, you had lines there. Just give me a minute. I just want to watch the end of this first, please. I swear to God, I was teary when I was watching that whole thing. I loved it. I loved that scene. So that would be one of my favorites, too. Absolutely. Do you have one? I, I mean, I flip-flop back and forth. We were just talking about this over here. Anytime Chad was around, because Ray was so serious, it was it was fun for me because I felt like, even though she was frustrated, it, she was still Ray. It was a bit it was a bit comical. It, it just took her out of her serious zone for a moment. There was also another episode we did where it was a talent show and Ray had to sing, which I actually really sing and they didn't get me to sing. They didn't even ask me if I yeah, was a singer. It's really weird. You but should look her up on, on Spotify. Oh, oh, see? I wasn't what? trying to do that. You can't. Yes. Like, it's not, it's, it's Give fine. me a minute. If you don't, it's fine. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, I saw what you did there. Oh, God. Yeah. So when she sang and she, it was like a big thing. Although, with, for sure, I mean, here we are together. And one of our favorite things, like every now and then, these two characters would fight. I don't know if you're aware of that. Yeah, we'd fight quite often, actually. What? And so if I, if we had the fight scene coming up and I knew that Katie was coming in right after me, I would say, can Katie and I do that together, please? Would that be okay? And they'd be like, oh God, here we go again. <laughs> yes, I suppose that would be all right. I'm like, Katie, we're gonna fight, this is so fun. And we go in there together and we just start, whatever came out of our mouths, that's what they would do. Yeah. And we'd always do the raspberry. And that was yeah. fun, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Somewhere there's a storage room filled with epic fights between the two of you that never made it into the show. We need to find those ASAP. Uh, I'm sure you've seen some changes in the voice acting industry over the last few years. How has the pandemic transformed what you, what you do? Well, you know, I actually thought early days of COVID, nothing was good about COVID. Except if you're an established voice actor with lots of different shows, then you just, I already had a studio at home and a microphone. I thought, okay, I'll just record at home. It should be okay. The problem is, as soon as that happened and people couldn't go into work, everybody got their own studio. Everybody got their own microphone and it became the wild, wild west. And then, you know, everybody was auditioning for, instead of auditioning against 30 people, we were auditioning against 800 and sometimes getting lost in the shuffle. 
So it actually, it's evolved because everybody's a voice actor now. And, and it's, it's wow. trickier. A little trickier. The other hard thing is, you know, now we're doing it like literally everything I do, pretty much I'm doing from home. So any cartoons I'm in, any TV commercials, whatever, I'm literally doing in my basement at home in my studio, which is okay. But when you're auditioning, you don't get any feedback at all. Like you're literally, they're saying, here are the sides, here's what you're gonna do. Before what we would do is we'd go to a studio and they would say, okay, uh, and I'd say, so what do you want for this character? And they'd say, well, we're kind of looking for blah, blah, blah. And they tell you what it was and you go, Oh, okay. I was thinking something else. Okay. Okay, let's go with that. And then I would do it their way. And then I'd maybe say, I was kind of thinking something different. What about this? And they'd go, hmm, never thought of that. Okay. How about if you take that and maybe do this? And so they'd be giving you direction the whole time. And you'd be going, okay, and you'd work with it. Now, cut to now, I'm in my basement going, what the hell do they want with this role? And what do you want with this role? Nobody answers except for the, the voices in my head. Stop talking to me, voices in my head. You suck. Shut up. I do not. Yeah, you do. You don't even know what you're doing. No, I don't. How so did Katie know. get in there? Katie, get out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that is true. Like, just an example. I'm not giving anything away. I auditioned for a hamster last week. The, the problem is, I have a million different voices in my head for all different things. And I... Um, you know, so then you give it a shot, it's a hamster, and you're like, I don't even know what I was doing, but it was, but you don't know, like, maybe it's an older hamster, they're, they're not giving you anything, so you really are just, like, rolling the dice and hoping that they'll just call you back, thinking, oh, but I worked with Katie on this, she does so many different voices, but, but if the choice you made wasn't what they were thinking, they just go, no, that's not who we want, they don't, they don't call you up and go, we know that you could probably do this, can you try it like this instead? No, nope, you're just gone. Flushed away, down the toilet. Right down the toilet. That's so frustrating. No direction beforehand to help you find the soul of the character. I think it'll, I think it'll change. I think, I don't know, I'm just being hopeful. I don't know, I think we so still- there's, there's pros and cons. You get to work in your pajamas, but now there's a million people house trying house. to get the I same actually, job. I do have a studio at home, but I actually demand to go into the studio. There, there's a bunch of actors that still go into studios just because I know that if enough people do that, they'll be like, oh, well, we have a session anyway, and then hopefully it'll catch. And I know it's more convenient to do it at home, but I also have to, I, you don't have the same situation. I've got stinky, rotten boys at home that are bugging me constantly. And but See, I've got my husband now because all my kids are gone, gone, and you're not coming back. If any of you are listening, you're not coming back. Except I love you. I got an 11 year old and a 15 year old, and they're awesome. I love my boys. But they'll they'll be like, I'll say, okay guys, recording, and I'll be I literally yell it just like that, recording, and they'll give me two minutes. So I've got like two minutes to lay down something, and then they'll start talking, and I'll, what is going on? And my husband, every single time I record, goes into the room right above me. I think this is what he does, puts on a pair of tap dance shoes and starts rehearsing his latest number, which probably isn't what he does because he doesn't have tap dance shoes, I don't think. But that's what it sounds like in my studio. And I'm just like, he's trying to kill me. He's trying to kill me. He's trying to kill me. So I press pause and I'm just like, waiting for him to stop his tap dance routine. And then he stops, I go, okay, he's gone. As soon as I press record again, he starts tap dancing again. Oh my god. Um, it's gonna it's gonna be the death of us, man. And I can't be polite about it. I'm just like, Babe, you knew I was recording. Was, oh sorry, I didn't know you could hear me. <laughs> every time. Every time. You're gonna have to convince him to put in a soundproof booth in the basement, I feel like. I feel like we tried to. Have you ever um, had a character that you've never played? that you could voice really well that you wish you would have played? Mr. Burns. No, can't. <laughs> please, please. Excellent. Please. I know, it's funny because, you know, you listen to things on TV and everything I listen to on the, like if you're thinking about becoming a voice actor, mimic everything. Absolutely everything. If you're in the car driving along, you hear a voice on the radio, do it. Just do it, just for fun. Can I do that? 
Can I make it better? Can I make it worse? Yeah. How can I make it different? Stuff like that. Any cartoon characters you hear, just mimic them, man. All the time. So I do that all the time. I drive my family nuts. They are so sick of me. They're so sick of me saying, oh, oh, I thought this just died. Check, check. Hey, did you pay? Oh, mine's still working. That's weird, Linda. <laughs> I, we I'm gave Katie the controls, by the way. What's that? We gave Katie the controls to your microphone, by the way. <laughs> A character that I want to play. Well, I'm sure there are, but I just right now can't think of one. But there are shows that I'd like to be on, like Bob's Burgers. I would like to. Yes. See, we're from Canada. We don't audition for those shows. But you know, there are shows, and I think, okay, I'd be a different character. Like I wouldn't. Although I love Linda. Like I would not, not just you. But yeah. Anyway, I don't even know if I answered what you asked. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna ask this question, uh, but it's a little difficult to answer. How long have you played Sailor Moon? There was the show, there was movies, so it's difficult, but I'm fair, and I will ask, how long have you played Sailor Moon? Well, I mean, I think I was like, I want to say something like 86 episodes or something like that. I don't even really, I don't even know. Usually the fans know more than I do. I don't know anything. I'm a bit of an idiot. I don't either because it was such a long time ago. So this hasn't been something that just keeps going. That was our first show. And then we did a lot of other things for 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> but so when I look back at that time, I would like to say, because I was mostly Sailor Mars the whole time. I think 10 episodes I was in Los Angeles and Emily Claire Barlow stepped in. She's awesome. And then she became Sailor Venus. So she went from Mars to Venus, which is pretty awesome. Um, but I think, I would like to say it was over five years, all of it, like, because then we'd stop and then we'd start again. Maybe it was less, I don't know. No, that sounds right, because it uh, started in 95 and rolled into 2000-ish, so yeah, it was about five years, I think. And two. It was in the 90s, like, 92, I think it was going to say. There you go. Okay. Uh, you have a question Angel about Nose. the original Japanese anime. It was very different from the American one. Uh, would you have preferred to be Usagi versus S Serena? See, I, th oh, I think I am losing this one. Uh, I like Serena. I like Serena. I don't know. I like Serena. I got a kid right now, though, who's in Japan. Right now. Really? Doing yeah. what? Living, living life large. My kids are living life large. They really are. Uh, she went there to teach, and just teach English and see where that it took her, and now she is working um, in film and television there. That's wonderful. Yeah, she's really, really having a good time. She gets to drop Linda's name every okay, now and then. Okay, see, this is a problem with kids. Yeah, they don't, give your, they don't give their parents any kind of credit, especially when they were younger. They're just like, no, 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 no. So, you know, my kids, there they have all these friends. They wouldn't tell their friends that I was Sailor Moon at all. They just wouldn't mention it at all to them. And I'd be like, what's your problem, man? Come on. <laughs> and so, of course, you know, you sit back because they're like, oh my God, mom, they don't care. So, one year for Halloween, I said to my daughter, so, what are all your friends dressing up as? What's Emily going to be? What's Kendra going to be? And, and, you know, tells me what Emily's going to be and skips over Kendra. And I'm like, wait, what's Kendra going to be? She goes, so I'm like, what? She goes, Sailor Moon. I was like, did you tell her? And she goes, tell her what? Oh my God. Tell her that, I don't know, your mother was the voice of Sailor Moon. She goes, no, it didn't come up. What? How does that not come up? She's dressed as Sailor Moon. Your mother is Sailor Moon. How does that not come up? I don't understand. She's like, oh my God, Mom. Seriously? No, I know. They're evil. Now, they're a little bit older, so they tell people. And that's more fun. But now they're asking me for things all the time. Can you sign this? Can you do this for this friend? And I'm just like, oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know Here about that. Here it comes. Yeah, exactly. They always come crawling back. Exactly. Uh, we do have a microphone. If there's any additional questions, if anybody got here late and didn't fill out a card, please form a well-organized line <laughs> behind the microphone, and we'll take some live questions. The Sailor Moon ambassador has, has arrived. She has arrived. Yes, there she is. If it, it is on. Okay. There you go. What's your name? Where are you from? I'm from here. San Antonio. San Antonio, Texas. Woo! It's so, April. It's I'm going to answer for you. Hi. Um, let's see. This is 
for Linda. For the first two. It's okay. Um, Take a step how, closer to the mic. There you go. I, are you sure? I'm pretty loud. Uh, how does it mean the best moon princess of all time? <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah. I love it. My tiara is always straight. Yeah. And then um, you had you did ask this question though. Um, was it tiring to have imagined yourself in any situation acting it out? Was it tiring to imagine yourself in any situation acting, acting it out? Because you didn't have a script or anything. You had a like. You know, it, the thing that, about it is, I am one of those people that is terrible at reading out loud. Really? I was that kid in class in school that when the teacher said, "Okay, we're going to be reading out loud today," I'd be like, and just the panic would set in, total panic, and I'd be sitting there just like. I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. So my book was always in front of my face. And I was I was pretty pretty outgoing. I know, you probably think I was shy. Stage right? Yeah, it was it was completely, but I could not read out. I was terrible at reading out loud. Terrible. I was that kid that you sat in class going, ooh, ooh. You know, like, oh, why did you put that word over here? And I don't know. Maybe there's a chance, maybe I'm dyslexic. I don't know. They never tested anybody for that, and I don't really care. I figured out my own little ways to sort of get through it. But at the time, it was awful. So I still have a little bit of this, ugh, I don't love cold reads. Cold reads are when you don't see a script at all and you just have to read like that. They scare me still. So I'll be like, oh, okay, 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 I can do this. So Sailor Moon terrified me because I was still pretty young in my career and I was like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this. I was just like, calm your mind, act, baby, you can do this. So it was scary for sure. How old were you when you started doing Sailor I must have been 12, because it was about 30 years ago. That uh, means I, I was four. I four. think I was, I think, no, I know how old I was, because I. my daughter was one, my baby was one, so I was 35, I guess. Oh, wow. 35. And I had a little, I had three little kids, doom, doom, awesome. doom. And they would just follow around behind me everywhere I went, my ducklings. I remember seeing somewhere on YouTube that, I think it was your very first Comic Con, it was your very first Comic Con that I saw on YouTube that you had gone to, and I was all excited that you were coming out now and doing these. And um, I believe you were going into an elevator with one of these girls, and the, little, the girl says to you, you're the second Sailor Moon yes. that I've met. I went to my very first Comic Con, and I didn't know what to think. I thought people were going to throw rotten fruit at me. I had no That's idea. What you said. <laughs> who, who the hell are you? Never heard of Sailor Moon. Go away. <laughs> off you go. Off you go. And this one, the first woman I came upon was dressed in something weird. Yeah. And she looks at my name, my badge that I had on, said Linda Ballantyne, guest. Mm -hmm. And she looks at it and she goes, Linda Ballantyne. I was like, yes, strange person that's dressed as something. I don't know you. <laughs> Hello. And she says, the voice of Sailor Moon. And I went, yes, yes I am. And she goes, <laughs> now I've met two of you. <laughs> and she turns around and she walks away. Oh and I was like, oh, I think I'm going to enjoy this experience here. Oh, Thank that you for that. Are was you great. sure she wasn't like a cartoon villain of some kind? That's a very ominous thing to say. <laughs> she may um, well have been Luna. I don't know. <laughs> one, one more thing. I thought it was amazing how I, I heard it how it went from the original first Sailor Moon voice who did like very short um, voiceover and then it was Terry Hawks who did it for a while and then she had to leave because she was pregnant with twins, right? And that's when you came in. Well, her the voice changed slightly, but as Serena got older, it sounded like her voice matured. So when you did her mature voice, I was like, oh, she's becoming such a good lady, I love it. I love how you did that. It just, it just played in so well. I love you. Uh, thank you. I have something for you. Prizes? You have prizes? What? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Which brings me to my call. Please. The call is coming. Are we ready? Yeah. Ready. <laughs> Here we go. Moon Cosmic Power! <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll do mine.
time to them. Please. Mars Fire so much. We have another question. Uh, what is your name and where are you from? Uh, my name is Claire and I'm here from San Antonio, Texas as well. And my question is, how does it make you feel knowing you have like a fan base who loves you and supports you for like being the role Sailor Moon? It is so surreal. It is the most bizarre thing because I'm like, we're literally just regular human beings, normal everyday people. And then we come to these Comic Cons and it's like, oh, people know us. Like we're in Texas right now. We're from Canada. We're from Canada. We walked down the street and people were like, hey, how's it going? We're like, yeah, good. How's it going with you, eh? So we do this, and then we, we've gone to cons that are in Australia, in Malta. You know, we're going places like this. Then I see an interview with Lizzo, with Oprah. And Oprah says to Lizzo, if you could be anyone, who would you be? And she goes, Sailor Moon. I can say Sailor Moon, can I? Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon. I'd be Sailor Moon. And that's it. And I was just like, Lizzo would be Sailor Moon. I love you, Lizzo. So Lizzo, call me. We'll talk. There's also, you guys look amazing. Thank you. Yes, I so do. Is that your natural hair color? I wish. <laughs> it's never too late. There's a future epic music video that Lizzo's gonna have of uh, a uh, Sailor Moon theme. That would be amazing. I, I've seen, haven't you seen, she's done a dance thing where she's dressed up as Sailor Moon. Oh yeah, she does a full on. Look it up, Babel. She's awesome, I love her. We have another question. What's your name and where are you from? I'm Leah and I'm from San Antonio. And What's your question? So, this is for both of you. Could you please like say a line as could you say uh, a line in your voices? Maybe, Maybe we'll your favorite it. line? Well, oh, Darian, you're so romantic. That's so sweet, you're such a meatball. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, wait, you can't believe it. You're always going to say this stuff. You're driving me crazy. Uh. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. And y'all look wonderful, the three of y'all. Just amazing. Mm -hmm. And I see Sailor Mars over there. Yes, yes. <laughs> I saw you earlier and you walked away and you're we like, no. And I weren't stupid, I would have chased you down, but I have stupid shoes on that I can't run in. I, I think she'll come back. She'll know. I have one final question. We have a baby here. We have got we've got baby oh, yeah, questions. Question. Come on up. Quick, quick, quick. It's never too late. What's your name and where are you from? Casey, I'm from San Antonio. Hi, what's your question? Well, it's not really a question, it's more of a thank you um, to both of y'all. Uh, I grew up watching Sailor Moon and it empowered me to be the woman I am today and I, I'm really, really thankful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, you're gonna come by our table later and I'm gonna squeeze that baby and bite, maybe take a toe off. I don't know, because it's just so kidding. cute. I just want to chew on my toes. But that is the cutest baby. <laughs> she lost a sock. I'm just gonna say it. Everybody can look down right, the floor. There might baby be a sock. sock. Yeah. Um, I have one final question, and you you spoke a little bit about this earlier, but it must have been a little bit more challenging for you to come into the situation where there's already been two seasons of Sailor Moon and you were coming in and there was a completely different person that you're trying to follow and, and fill these shoes in. Did you have sort of a harder time making it your own or what was that like? It was terrible. It was terrifying. And I didn't know. So I get a call from my agent. My agent says, hey, you got the role, you got Sailor Moon. And I went, no way, what character? Because I had auditioned for different characters. She went, Sailor Moon. And I was like, no, I, I'm the voice of Sailor Moon? She goes, yeah. And I was like, oh, cool. This is awesome. Right yeah. on. So I go downstairs, my, my husband and his buddy Tony are in the basement. And I sit on the stairs and I look at them and I go, I just got Sailor Moon. And my husband goes, oh, no way, what part? <laughs> Sailor Moon. And his buddy Tony goes, no way, 
well, you better be good, because my kids watch. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Penny drops. Oh my god, I have to take over this role that is already iconic. Oh my god, what am I going to do? Oh my god, what have I done? And now I've got it in my head. I'm going to be the other Barney. Remember in the Flintstones? Remember the Flintstones, that Barney's voice changed? It was like, oh my god, I'm the other Barney. Oh my god, what have I done? So I'm now panicked. I'm panicked. And my husband's like, you're fine, you're fine. Just, just make it your own. I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about. You're not a voice actor. You're an idiot. Who would say that to me? Oh my god. So I go in, I start recording, and they're just getting me to scream higher and higher, and they wanted me to go higher. So it was so like, <laughs> And I hated it. I hated it. I was like, oh my god, this is so this is so bad. This is I hate this voice. It's too high. And it's, they're making me scream all the time. What are you doing? And I come home literally crying. Literally crying. We're like, I hate this stupid part. It's so stupid. They're making me scream so high. And my husband would say, Babe, just make it your own. You gotta make it your own. I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about, because you're not a voice actor, idiot. And I kept, I kept hammering myself and hammering myself, and then finally one day I'm going into work and I'm just like, here, I could feel everything tensing up, I'm just getting myself all panicky, and I just went, stop. What are you doing? Like, if you could start all over and be the very first person to do this voice, what would you do? And that's when I sat down and thought about what a teenager was. That's when I went, okay, I wanted this, I, want, I would want her to be this, I would want to be funny, I would want this and this and this. And I just went, okay, then that's what you're doing. That's what you're doing from now on. You're going in there and that's what you're going to give them. And I did. And I thought that they were going to go, can you do it higher, higher, and make me start screaming again? And they didn't. They just let me do my thing. And it was fantastic. I felt so much better. I knew who the character was. I knew who she wanted she should be. And that was all I needed. And I came home and I was like, yeah! And my husband said, how is your day today, honey? And I said, I had the best day. And he said, I thought you were doing Sailor Moon. And I said, I know, I was. I finally figured it out. I know what to do with this character. I just had to make it my own. <laughs> and my husband went, good for you, honey. You figured it out all by yourself. Figured it out all by my own self. Eureka! Linda Katie, thank you so much for meeting with us. Don't make a run for applause. <laughs> Parting words for the fans? I would say come over and even even if you don't want to say, have anything signed, if you just want to come by and say hi, we love you and we would come love say to hi. say hi. And thank you so much. Well, we got tons and tons of great pictures and stuff too, and we'll yep. sign anything. Anything. Yep. yep. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you so you. much. Say to the picture of Linda and Kitty. Hey guys, AJ and I'm here. For more GeekCast episodes, subscribe to us on your podcast app and please write us a review. Be sure to like us at Facebook at facebook.com slash countdowncitygeekcast. Follow us on Twitter at ccg underscore podcast or visit our website at www.countdowncitygeekcast.com. See you later, guys.